The Vatican, the seat of the Roman Catholic Church and home to the Pope, is said to be hiding a variety of strange items in its museums, storage facilities, hidden closets, and other nooks and crannies. These items are said to include secret books, items, relics, historical artifacts, mysterious devices, and other objects. The Chronovisor, a claimed time viewer, that could see into the past and allow its operator to take images as proof, is one that appears frequently like the time machine it is purported to be. This invention, for reasons unknown to me, began to be discussed quite often on the internet. Could it be that the chronovisor is being sought for in plot speculations for the upcoming Indiana Jones film, under the title Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, starring Harrison Ford? All the rumors about this mysterious device, point to the possibility of time travel, in other words, the ability to see past or upcoming events in the history of mankind. Could it be because Pope Benedict XVI passed away? Benedict XVI, according to many, intended to return the Catholic Church to more traditional teachings, values, and rituals. Is there a link between the Indiana Jones film's long-running artistic conflicts with the Nazis, and young Joseph Ratzinger's forced membership in the Nazi party's Hitler Youth Wing? Another possible explanation for the relationship to Benedict is that Marcello Pellegrino Ornetti, the purported creator of the chronovisor, was a former Benedictine monk. Let's look into this mysterious and incredible story. In fact, complete and explanatory information about the fact that Father Pellegrino Ornetti may have used the Vatican time machine at least a few times in the 1950s, is practically non-existent today. The whole story is shrouded in mystery. But on the surface, one disturbing question remains. How did the Benedictine monk acquire the knowledge and tools, needed to build and use the chronovisor? Marcello Pellegrino Ornetti, born in 1925, joined the Benedite Order in 1941 at the age of 16. He was a Roman Catholic priest during World War II. As a priest, Father Ernetti became an exorcist as well as a musician, music theorist and physicist. It was in this last capacity, due to the end of the war, that Ernetti's father may have entered the world of time travel machines. After the war in 1952s, Ernetti claimed he was working in the electroacoustics laboratory of the Catholic University, when a bulky tape recorder suddenly emitted, what he believed was the sound of his dead father's voice giving him support. Pope Pius XII reportedly told him, the Vatican might benefit from such an integration of science and faith when he brought this to him in Rome. Bernetti disclosed to a different priest in the 1960s, that he joined an exclusive circle of scientists and serious thinkers that included 12 people. According to rumors about Bernetti, the inventors of the chronovisor included the famous former Nazi-turned-American rocket scientist Werner von Braun, and the Italian physicist Enrico Fermi. And here again the question arises. How did a monk become a member of this privileged group? He is said to have used his understanding of old music theory, as well as exorcism, to construct current physics ideas. Later, Bernetti told journalists, that he and the other eleven created the device in the mid-1950s out of a number of antennae, three of which were made of mysterious metals, that could receive light and sound signals on all wavelengths, a direction finder for tuning to a specific time and location, and a TV-like monitor with a screen, a keypad, and a recording device. Twelve participants in the invention, such as scientists, philosophers and innovators, stared at the screen over and over again, periodically changing time periods, as Ernetti later told the media. He claimed they witnessed events like Cicero speaking to the Roman Senate in 106 to 43 years before our era. Speeches by Napoleon Bonaparte and Mussolini. An ancient performance of Quintus Ennius lost play Thyestes, one of Rome's most significant writers. And for his fellow Catholics, the four final days of Jesus from the Last Supper to the conclusion of his crucifixion. What he claimed they saw occurring, without sound. As news of the supposed time machine spread, Bernetti released Latin text from the lost play of Quintus Ennius as proof. For devout believers it could have been enough, but doubters wanted more. So, in 1972 he presented a purported chronovisor vision of the crucified Jesus, to the Italian journal La Domenica del Corriere for publication. 
After this publication of the image, the threat of loss of confidence from the Vatican and the loss of his life position hung over Father Anetti. An unknown reader of the publication, identified the image as a mirror image of a wooden sculpture of the face of Jesus, taken from a postcard. Father Renetti was charged with flipping the photo, altering it, blurring it, and using it as proof. Further investigation pointed out, that the Latin words to be from the lost play did not appear until some 250 years later, and some were misused. As a result of persecution and censure, Renetti admitted that the image was a fake. But on his deathbed, he admitted that the chronovisor had indeed been created, but needed more improvements. Despite the revelations from Father Ernetti, many individuals still think the chronovisor was not a fake, and that it actually exists and was hidden deep below the Vatican vaults, where it is still utilized. Please note, that as usual in slander, an unknown person appears without a name and a personal photo, and claims that this is a fake. But at the same time, do not tell us. Who is this whistleblower, when and under what circumstances did he determine that it was a fake? It turns out, that somewhere someone said something, and they give it to us as the pure truth. If this is true about the chronovisor created, could Pope Benedict XVI have used it? For your information, Pope Benedict XVI had a real name like Joseph Aloysius Ratzinger, was only two years younger than Pellegrino Ornetti, and went through many of the same events, that were happening at the time. Joseph Ratzinger was a thinker but not a physicist in his capacity as a Jesuit educator. He adopted the name Benedict, after Saint Benedict of Nursia, the founder of the Benedictine monasteries, and Pope Benedict XV, who served as Pope during the First World War. Most people will remember Benedict XVI for resigning from office rather, than remaining in it till he passed away. Could he have used the chronovisor to make such a choice? To find out, we may have to wait until new secret documents from the Vatican emerge. If the chronovisor exists, is it due to the reduction in membership of the Vatican Catholic Church in recent years? In the summer of this year 2023, a film called Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, should be released on movie screens. The film is quite ambiguous and as we already know, we as viewers are often presented with truthful clues in films. Given the events that are associated with the monk and the chronovisor, something tells me, that the author of the film with Indiana Jones, received much more information about the events with the chronovisor, on the basis of which they created a new exciting film. We can only wait for the release of the film, and conduct our own analysis of events. I am sure that the film will bring new impressions about the information received. My personal vision of a mysterious story, I told you in this short video story. But something tells me that, the story is quite plausible, since in some ancient writings of the great Tartaria there are references to the mysterious so-called special stones, that could convey an image of any events on our planet. Of course using the word stone, this is just a figurative name, since the narrator did not reveal the true name of the item, that transmitted images based on a voice command. This is comparable to the current remote video surveillance device. I do not insist on the veracity of the free flight of personal thought, let each of you decide for himself where is the truth and where is the lie. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends. Perhaps some of you will be able to supplement this story with your personal story. Thank you for watching this video to the end. Stay with us. It will be interesting.